Mac 1, baby. Trying to build that inspiration. I got seven seconds to catch you, you guys. And if this don't do it, nothing gonna do it, you heard? Yes, sir. What's going down, people? Al York Sports, the raw truth. Gonna talk to y'all about the NBA Conference Finals. Tapping on that Loma. You know what I mean? Versus Devin Haney. What a great fight. But before I tap into anything, I gotta get something out the way ASAP, man. Had a young fella hit my page earlier. Try to change my narrative and shit, man. He know what he was doing. Sergio, yeah, I'm calling you out, dog. I mean, I deleted you, but I know you got peoples that will let you know. Um, He basically was talking about the Celtics. Wish they didn't fire a doka. So I talked, but I responded. I said, if he wouldn't be putting hands on all them ladies, including the general manager's wife, he'd have still had his job. Then he going to hit me back. I guess this is where he tried to change my narrative. He should have known what I meant by that. But he flipped it to, so yo, if he hit all those girls, how would he have a job? So I know with the terminology hands, usually when I use it, if I say I put hands on a dude, that means we fought. I either gave him a fade or he gave me a fade. But when I use hands on a female, usually means if a, if, a, if a brother breathes through it. So what I was using it as is that he ran through all of them ladies in that organization and then he stressed one, which was the general manager's wife, where he was stalking her. But anyway, let me get back to the moral of the story. This little dude trying to get a name for himself, man. He he climbing up the wrong tree, man. So I told him ASAP. I said, yo, dog, if I would have said he put hands on one girl, I could see where you could have fucked up what I meant. And, and I could see where you didn't try to change the narrative. But when I said he put hands on multiple girls, I mean, think about it. Who can put hands on anybody as far as beating them? Multiple girls in an organization and get away with it. Nobody. Now, you can sleep with girls and get away with it for a while until somebody open their mouth. But when you beat something up, there's going to be marks, bruises. People going to talk. People just going to put you out there. Same thing with him. You know, sleeping with them, but it took, it took longer. More of the story. I had to check him. Uh... He thought it was funny. It's nothing funny. Then he going to end it with, yo, I checked all the reports. Uh, that's fake news, old man. Or old head, he said. Now, I went up on his picture, looked this picture up. He looked like an ex 30 year old dolphin. I'm keeping it 100. Then he got a teardrop. Now, no disrespect to all my dudes in New York that got teardrops. Them teardrops in New York where I know cats were earned were earned you could tell shorty added that as a style and that's 1980 shit so you talking old head that's old shit homie you bugging little dude and, and, and i told him listen i'm not with the internet arguing you live in portland if you didn't i would have met up with you and when we could have sat down and took it whatever way you wanted to take it i'm not here trying to be gangster because them days is over but you ain't going to call my car and I'm going to just stay the fuck quiet. That, nah, that doesn't go down with me, dog. I'm always going to be me at the end of the day. I'm just tamed right now. I'm very much tamed. I know what I want. I'm older. I'm smarter. But I ain't going to let no little motherfucker try to play me, especially on my page or on my show. Not happening. And I have to do that. I have to get that out the way. Let's go to the NBA conference. We're going to start with the Eastern Conference. Number two, Boston, playing number eight, Miami Heat. Miami Heat got a commanding three-zip lead on the Boston Celtics, beating them three straight games, 
First game at Boston, 123-116. Second game, 111-105. And the third game, which was yesterday, 128-102. A three-zip lead for the Miami Heat. Salute to my man, Steven Islaw, who's been a Miami Heat when LeBron was there, before LeBron, and after LeBron. I give him his props. He not no bandwagon cat that leaves a team when they star leaves. No. He been liking Miami when they went bad, the bubble, all that shit. Salute to Islam. What I could say, all my boys, none of us believed in Miami Heat in this series. My top three teams in the East were Milwaukee, Boston, and the Sixers. I didn't even think Miami Heat. I thought Cleveland and New York before I thought Miami Heat. Miami Heat is catching everybody by surprise. And like I told my dog earlier, they are playing the best team basketball. Now listen to me. When I say best team basketball, doesn't mean they the best team. Don't change my narrative like Shorty try to do. You know I'm just fucking with y'all. But what I'm saying is, they got each other's back. They, they dogs. They got Lowry acting like a dog. Vincent playing like a dog. Bio's a dog. Butler's a dog. Martin's a dog. Vincent's a dog. That's why they, they humiliating the Celtics because they, they exposing their weaknesses. The only real dog the Celtics got in my book is Marcus Smart is a dog. And Jalen Brown got, you know, he got pop-up dog. Like he looks like a dog one game and then he don't. But the dogs are taking over this this, this whole series. Three zip lead. They laughing at them. You got Butler calling time out doing that shit. Hoffa did to him. I mean, they are the better team right now. I know record wise, what we seen wise doesn't implicate it. I get it. And they missing two individuals. If you heard my interview, I said I like I like Boston. To win in a long series. As a matter of fact, I just said I like Boston to win in seven. But I knew if Miami was going to win this series, it would have to be quick like they did Milwaukee. The Knicks went six. Um, I wouldn't call that short, but that's not the distance. But they handled the Knicks in six, and they should handle the Celtics, I think, in game four. I don't think they want to do game five. Then lose at Boston to come back home and close them. I mean, it could be. NBA might want it. NBA might need the money. It could be. But I think they close them out. I really think they close them out. Um, I mean, they've been playing superior ball. Jimmy Buckets, man, what else can you say? And Tatum, you know, I love Jason Tatum, one of the top players in the league. But I keep saying it. I said it the other day. My man Noel Parker has some slick shit to say. I said he don't have a dog in him. He said, what do you mean? He scored 28 points, 37 points. See, he know everything's points. Like, points don't make you a dog. You know, y'all that know basketball know what's a dog. Jimmy Butler is a dog. Michael Jordan was a dog. Kobe Bryant was a dog. I don't even count LeBron as a dog. He got a pop-up dog, just like Jalen Brown. I'm keeping it 100. But anyway... Miami leads 3-zip, Butler averaging 26, 7 and 6, Vincent 18, 2 and 2, Bam 18, 9 and 5, Martin 19, 4 and 2, uh, Strauss 12, Duncan Robinson 12, Lowry 7. Now for Boston, you got Tatum averaging 26 and 10, Brown 16 and 6, Brown's way over under his season average, he's not showing up. Uh, you got Brogdon 11. Three and two, smart nine, Hoff is missing in action. Five points, Hoff is averaging in this series. And uh, they just totally get an outplay, uh, out hustle, and out coach. And that's another thing. Spolstra is way, way over that young coach. That young coach is way over his head. With more talent than not, he still can't figure it out. And it looks like Miami will be at the chip. Now, let's go to the Western Conference. You got the Denver Nuggets 1 versus 7 LA Lakers. They also up 3-zip. I call Denver in 6, so at least I'll get this one right. Though Miami, when I said Boston in 7, you know what I mean? Even though I said Miami would have to win early, but I'm not hedging my bet. I said Boston in 7, so that's a loss. 
unless they come back. He, I got Denver in six. Uh, I don't think Denver closes out tonight, though. Um, I hope no, no, nah, I don't hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm right. Uh, I hope it goes to a game five, and then they close it out in the ball arena. But I like to see LeBron and them get one tonight. Uh, three zip lead. Uh, joke has been everything. Murray's been everything. I mean, these two guys, you know, AD and LeBron, no chop level, but Murray and Jokic right now is just playing with the Los Angeles Lakers. Let me give you the three-game scores. First game in Ball Arena, 132-116 Denver. Second game, 108-103 Denver. Third game, 119-108 at L.A. Jokic averaging 27, 14, or 15 and 11. Murray, 35 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds, 35 points. Murray's averaging. He playing bubble Murray ball. Porter's Jr. 15-9-3. Caldwell Pope 15-2-2. And, and Caldwell Pope, KPC, is the most important guy, I mean, for Denver. Because nobody expected him to do what he's doing. He's canning all the open threes, hitting the layups, playing defense. Uh, this is his ex-team, the Lakers. You know he wants to put them away. You got Gordon averaging 7 and Bruce Brown 14. Uh, Lakers, you got Anthony Davis. Uh, 29 points, 14 rebounds. LeBron, 24 points, 9 rebounds, 10 assists. LeBron's almost averaging a triple-double. Salute to King LeBron James. Uh, Austin Reeves, 22.7, which is about 23, 4, and 6. Hichimura, 14 and, and 3 rebounds. And then you got Schroeder, 5. You got Lonnie Walker, 5. And the most disappointing guy that the Lakers needed to show out is D'Lo, who's averaging 7. Uh, it's so many reasons why the Lakers is losing this series. The main one being that I just think Denver has the better team. The better team. And you got to remember, the Lakers came together at midseason. I mean, they had A.D. LeBron and Schroeder, but when you added uh, Vanderbilt, Beasley, Hachimura, um, you know, Lonnie Walker was hurt. So when you add all these guys, D'Lo, all of them came in late. And don't get me wrong, even though they came in late, they still bumped off Golden State. They still bumped off Memphis. But a team like the Denver Nuggets that been together six, seven years, whole body. The core has been their whole body six, seven years. And they never been to a chip in God knows how long. This is why I said this is their year. And I'm, like I said, tonight I think the Lakers push it to a game five. I will hope for that because we're not going to have no basketball. We have two sweeps and maybe a week. So it's good to have an extra game to give us, you know, more entertainment and more stuff to bet on. But we all know both of these, or both of these series is done series. Miami will face the Denver Nuggets in a chip. And we're going to talk about that when we get there. But right now these chips, you know, these series have to close out. Even though we know who's going to move on, but they still have to close out because nobody, I think, ever came from a 3-0 deficit. In baseball, yes, the Red Sox did it to my Yankees. I'll never forget that. Went in four in a row, but never seen that in basketball, and I don't think we're going to see it yet. These teams are way too focused and too good to give up this three-zip lead on both sides. Now I'm going to jump into the boxing match on Saturday night. You had the Dream Haney, uh, 29 and 0, versus Lomo, who was like 17 and 2. Haney was favored three dollars. Lomo was plus 240. Uh, the draw, I think, was something like uh, what was it? Uh, or decision was Haney 250, Lomo I think 650, something like that, 350, something like that. Um, like I said. I'm not a professional scorekeeper, so I'm not going to sit here and try to convince you guys like I'm a professional scorekeeper. No, I'm a professional sports talk guy that been doing that been watching sports for 40 years. That's my shit. Scorekeeping ain't never been my shit. But what I can say, I think I know enough that when I watch a fight. I usually could pick the winner after the fight, not before the fight. If I could, I'd be rich. But after seeing the fight, I could determine who won that fight 90% of the times. 90. But remember, that's after watching the whole fight. I understand the champion so-called got a 10-point system. 
I mean, I don't know how true is that. I've been hearing that all my life. God knows how true is that. I mean, it came to light this Saturday for sure. I had Lomachenko watching that fight closely at least seven to five rounds and, and maybe even eight four. There was a judge that called the fight 116, 112. I don't know what fight they were fucking watching. They had Haney on that. Then the other one I think was 15, 13. If this fight would have ended in a draw, I would have still been upset. But then I would have told myself, Al, to beat that champion, especially with those four belts, you got to humiliate him. Did Loma humiliate him? No. Did he beat him? Yes. Did he beat him enough to get the win? Obviously not. This is what fucks me up. Today, I heard a lot of people. Max Kellerman, that knows boxing. I give Kellerman boxing over me and I got him on everything else. But he got me on boxing. He had his own scorecard. Now, I don't know how long he's been scorekeeping, but I know he knows more than me and a lot of other motherfuckers. Max been fucking with boxing for a minute. He had Loma 115, 113 on the card. They spoke to Shakur Stevenson. Now, a lot of y'all might be like, yeah, but he want to fight, ain't he? He hating. Shakur had an 8-4 Loma. He said straight up 8-4 Loma. Ryan Garcia. He ain't hating on Haney. He didn't fight Haney. He didn't fight Loma, another though. He had Loma winning about 8 4 7 5. Um, there was another individual. Uh, a matter of fact, I'm going to go deeper. If you look at Haney's corner, when they were about to give out the score, you know, the scores were coming out. They looked fucking nervous as fuck. And when they said still, they all look more surprised than anybody. They look more surprised than a motherfucker that walks in his house and gets a surprise party thrown for him. I'm keeping it 100. Now, like I said, I could have been all right with the draw. Because of the 10-point system, I would have said, you know what? I get it. That's boxing. Boxing always been suspect. But to take that fight away from Loma, who did everything. That he was supposed to do. If you know Lomachenko. He starts off slow. That's why Teofimo got him. Teofimo beat him the first seven rounds. So the only way Loma could have won. Was by knocking him out. Teofimo ate all those first seven. Eight rounds. That didn't happen this fight. Loma jumped out early. Loma dropped more punches. Landed more punches. Uh, beat him to the punch. Looked like the more aggressive fighter. I'm telling y'all what I've seen, dog. I'm not here just saying slick shit. No. I picked Devin Haney's decision. Me and Phyllis Jacino on my Friday show. You can look at it. You can look at it. But after seeing the fight, I'm not going to be here and be like, yo, I told y'all. I told y'all, Haney. You know I know what I'm talking about. No, that's not being the raw truth. The raw truth is when I seen the fight before the fight, I like the Haney decision. But after seeing the fight, my conscience ain't going to let me lie. It told me Loma won the fight. My eyes told me that. So I'm not going to be here in front for y'all. Yo, I call, the, I, I call Haney this. No, no. Fuck what I said. Loma won that fight, bro. I'm telling you. Loma won that fight. A scorekeeper or no scorekeeper, I seen the fucking fight. He won that fight, though. That's my opinion. And like I always tell y'all, opinions are like assholes. Everybody got one. But let me tell you something. I was all on that fight. While y'all were drinking, standing up, getting plates, I never moved from the TV like this. I drank after the fight. Because I wanted to make sure that I see what I had to see. And in my book, Loma won.
I got nothing against Haney. I don't fuck with Loma like that either. I respect Loma. I respect Haney. But I'm going to call it like I see it. There's times I had fights and I felt like I lost. And I told my dude, yo, he got me, dog. They're like, what you mean he got you? He got me. I thought he got the better of me, dog. I'm keeping it 100. Y'all know how I get that. You guys that know me know. That's why I booted that son of a gun earlier off my page. Changing my narrative. Dauphine motherfucker. Teardrop drawing it because you think it's a style. You ain't put no work in to earn that teardrop. Stop fronting. And with that, Al York Sports, I love y'all. If I got excited, it's because I'm speaking the inside. The inside of me is talking. The inside of me is talking. Great NBA playoffs. Conference finals is kind of ending kind of suspect with these potential sweeps. Loma Mahaney fight was incredible. Salute to Loma, who was the big underdog. And I felt prevail that fight, though he didn't win through the judges. And with that, y'all hold your heads. I hope y'all continue to watch my content. Because like I say, bro, I'm going to take a page from Al Pacino. Even when I lie, I tell the truth. And I'm going to leave it like that. Y'all hold your heads. Al York Sports, the raw truth. Love y'all.